Israel, killing more than a thousand people and taking hundreds of hostages. Among those held and thought to still be alive are five Americans. Israel's response has killed thousands of Palestinians and created a humanitarian crisis in Gaza. President Biden, you've put forward a, a proposal to resolve this conflict, but so far Hamas has not released the remaining hostages and Israel is continuing its military offensive in Gaza. So what additional leverage will you use to get Hamas and Israel to end the war? You have two minutes. Number one, everyone from the United Nations Security Council straight through to the G7 to the Israelis and Netanyahu himself have endorsed the plan I put forward, endorsed the plan I put forward, which has three stages to it. The first stage is trade the hostages for a ceasefire. Second phase is a ceasefire with additional conditions. The third phase is no, the end of the war. The only one who wants the war to continue is Hamas, number one. They're the only ones standing out. We're still pushing hard from, to get them to accept. In the meantime, what's happened? In Israel, we're finding that the only thing I've denied Israel was 2,000-pound bombs. They don't work very well in populated areas. They kill a lot of innocent people. We're providing Israel with all the weapons they need and when they need them. And by the way, I'm the guy that organized the world against Iran when they had a full-blown intercontinental ballistic, ballistic missile attack on Israel. No one was hurt. No one Israeli was accidentally killed, and it just stopped. We saved Israel. We are the biggest pr pr producer of support for Israel of anyone in the world. And so that's, they're, they're two different things. Hamas cannot be allowed to be continued. We continue to send our experts and our intelligence people as to how they can get Hamas like we did bin Laden. You don't have to do it. And by the way, they've been greatly weakened, Hamas, greatly weakened, and they should be. They should be eliminated. But you've got to be careful for what using certain weapons among population centers. Just going back to Ukraine for one second. We have an ocean separating us. The European nations together have spent a hundred billion or maybe more than that, less than us. Why doesn't he call them and say, you got to put up your money like I did with NATO? I got them to put up hundreds of billions of dollars. The Secretary General of NATO said Trump did the most incredible job I've ever seen. You wouldn't, they wouldn't have any, they were going out of business. We were spending almost a hundred percent of the money was, was paid by us. He didn't do that. He's getting all you got to ask these people to put up the money. We're over a hundred billion dollars more spent, and it has a bigger impact on them because of location, because we have an ocean in between. You got to ask them as far as Israel and and Hamas. Israel's the one that wants to go. He said the only one that wants to keep going is Hamas. Actually, Israel is the one, and you should let him go and let him finish the job. He doesn't want to do it. He's become like a Palestinian. But they don't like him because he's a very bad Palestinian. He's a weak one. President Biden, you have a minute. I've never heard so much foolishness. This is a guy who wants to get out of NATO. Are you going to stay in NATO? He's going to pull out of NATO. The idea that we have, our strength lies in our alliances as well. It may be a big ocean, but we're ever able to avoid a war in, in Europe, a major war in Europe. What happens if, in fact, you have Putin continue to go into, into NATO? We have an Article 5 agreement. Attack on one is attack on all. You want to start the nuclear war he keeps talking about, go ahead. Let Putin go in and control Ukraine and then move on to Poland and other places. We'll see what happens then. He has no idea what the hell he's talking about. And by the way, I got 50 other nations around the world to support Ukraine, including Japan and South Korea, because they understand that this, this, this kind of dislocation has a serious threat to the whole world peace. No, no major war in Europe has ever been able to be contained just to Europe. President Trump, just to follow up, would you support the creation of an independent Palestinian state in order to achieve peace in the region? I'd have to see, but before we do that, the problem we have is that we spend all the money. So they kill us on trade. I made great trade deals with the European nations. Because if you add them up, they're about the same size economically. Their economy is about the same size as the United States. And they were written, no cars, no, they don't want anything that we have. But we're supposed to take their cars, their food, their everything, their agriculture. I changed that. But the big thing I changed is they don't want to pay. And the only reason that he can play games with NATO is because I got them to put up hundreds of billions of dollars. I said, and he's right about this, I said, no, 
I'm not going to support NATO if you don't pay. They asked me that question. Would you guard us against Russia at a very secret meeting of the 28 uh, states at that time, uh, nations at that time? And they said, no, if you don't pay, I won't do that. And you know what happened? Billions and billions of dollars came flowing in the next day and the next months. But now we're in the same position. We're paying everybody's bills. Let's turn to the issue of democracy. Uh, former President Trump, uh, I want to ask you about January 6, 2021. After